Okay, so here are a few more examples where we want to determine the intervals on which these functions are continuous. Um, in this first one, we have a sum of two square root functions. Now individually, this term is going to be continuous on, on the interval from 1 to infinity, right? Uh, we need x to be bigger than or equal to 1. Um, this one is continuous on the interval from minus infinity up to 5, okay? So if we want to figure out where this function is, is continuous, well, our, our properties of continuous functions say that if you add two continuous functions, you will get a continuous function. So this f of x is going to be continuous at every point where this function is continuous and this function is continuous. And because we're dealing with square root functions, you know, most of the functions you're familiar with, determining intervals of continuity more or less boils down to determining domain in, in a lot of cases, right? Um, so this is defined for x bigger than or equal to 1. This one is defined for x less than or equal to 5. We want to be able to add them, so we need both of these conditions to hold. And the result is that f is continuous on the intersection of these two intervals. So if I take the interval from 1 to infinity and I intersect with the interval from minus infinity to 5, right? Uh, if you want to think in terms of a, of a number line, right? We have on the one hand everything from 1 going that way. On the other hand, we have everything from 5 going that way. We want the bit that's in common, which is everything from 1 to 5. Okay, so that's not so bad. Um, what do we know about this next function, g of x? Well, we know that this is a power function. So in particular, it's a polynomial. And we know that sine, so we know that both of these functions are continuous everywhere, right? So the sine function. And both of these are continuous on the whole real line, right? So in this case, we can say that g is continuous on on r, or if you like, minus infinity to infinity. And the reason is that it's the product of continuous functions. Or I guess if we wanted to say more precisely, it's the product of two functions which are also continuous on r. Okay, what about h of x? Well, here we see that we have a composition and we know from properties of continuous functions that the composition of two continuous functions is continuous. Um, the natural log function is continuous on its domain. The square root function is continuous on its domain. Uh, so they're both, both functions are continuous on their domains, but there's still the question of composition, right? We, we need to make sure that whatever input we use for the natural log, it needs to give us an output that is included in the square root. So we, in other words, we need the natural log function to be bigger than or equal to zero. So now we have to think, where is the natural log equal to zero? We think back, we say, ah, at one, okay? So we need x to be bigger than or equal to 1, right? Um, so as long as x is bigger than or equal to 1, 
the natural log is going to be defined and it's going to be bigger than or equal to zero, right? Because we know the natural log kind of grows. It gets bigger and bigger as x gets bigger. So the natural log is fine. And we can take the square root of a positive number. So everything is good here, right? So we need x bigger than or equal to 1. So that means that h is continuous on the interval from 1 to infinity. 